Hi. <coughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Laurent. I'm from the University of Cambridge. And I want to talk to you about how we can erase secrets from RAM. So in the rest of the talk, I'll, I'll be considering a non-malicious program P, which uses some kind of secrets, password or crypto keys. And once the program is done using those secrets, it try to erase them from RAM. Now, ideally, what we'd like to guarantee is that if we then get, give access uh, to an attacker to the entire system's volatile memory and CPU state, this attacker is still unable to recover the secrets. In practice, this is really challenging because there's an enormous amount of code uh, involved. So it's not just about the program P that we're looking at. It's also kernel code, uh, libraries, uh, OS libraries, codes running in peripherals, and so on and so forth. So in the rest of this talk, I'm going to relax the threat model a little bit, and I'm going to give the attacker only access to the program's user space memory and CPU state. So um, in practice, the main concern that people have when it comes to uh, sec securely deleting f uh, data from RAM is compiler optimization. And there's a, si uh, a simple example on this slide. So we have a uh, sensitive functions, which declares a sensitive buffer on the stack, and before the function returns, the programmer is calling this uh, zero mem function, uh, which aims at zeroing the buffer, uh, sensitive buffer. And the main concern that people have is that the compiler might, might actually remove the call to the zero mem function, because as far as the compiler is concerned, the sensitive buffer is going out of scope when the function returns. So it's kind of, of wasteful uh, to erase this, this variable, since it's never going to be accessed again in the context of the function. Uh, and later in the talk, I'll, I'll give you some more examples about problems that occur in practice, which are actually not related to compiler optimization. So uh, what we realized early on in this project is that there was no tool to actually help developers assess their program. So we just decided to create a tool. Uh, the first approach is to use static code analy analysis, which uh, is based on analyzing the source code of the program. Uh, and because of this, it cannot account for compiler optimizations. Neither can it account for memory accesses due to uh, the application binary interface or register spills. So for those of you who haven't heard the, the term register spill before, it just uh, refers to uh, the fact that as a compiler uh, runs out of registers to use, it will basically spill the registers on the stack, that is, copy them over to the stack temporarily to be able to reuse those registers. So because of the problem of static code analysis, we opted for a dynamic code analysis, which run the actual binary which is generated by a compiler. That in practice gives us virtually no false positive at the expense of needing a comprehensive set of unit tests to have good code coverage. So we use a simple technique, well-known technique called tent tracking. So think of the tent as being a zero or a one. And when a memory location is marked with a tent of one, it just means that the, uh, this memory location contains sensitive data. Then we declare 10 sources from which the data becomes tented. So typically, that would be a file containing sensitive data, say your private key. Um, and every time the, the program P reads from this, uh, from this file, we're going to taint the memory location where the data is, be is being copied into. Um, and then as the program continues its execution, we need to be able to uh, propagate the taint accordingly. So we do this in two ways. Uh, first, we do this during uh, assignment. So typically, if you have a, a tented variable, copied over to a new variable, this new variable also becomes tented. And we also propagate tent based on pointer arithmetic operations. So think of this as just being a uh, table lookup where the table itself is not tented, but, but the index that you use for lookup is tented. And that's used a lot uh, every time you do format conversions, say between binary format and base64 format. Because we're dealing with cryptography, we also need a way to untaint memory locations that contain the result of a uh, function that are cons considered one way, so typically an encryption function, or uh, hash wave functions, so long as the, the input to the hash wave function has high entropy. So we implemented all those ideas in, in a new tool that we call Secret Grind, which we make available in GitHub. And we've started evaluating uh, three crypto libraries with it, uh, GPG, OpenSSL, and Embed TLS. Now, surprisingly, we haven't found any problems uh, because of compiler optimizations. Now, to be fair, all those libraries have a, a hardened version of this uh, zero mem function, uh, which is precisely uh, implemented to avoid compiler optimizations. 
However, if you, if you ask the compiler people, they'll tell you that the, this hardening is kind, of, is kind of a hack, and it's actually not bulletproof. But it seems that in practice, uh, it's reassuring to see that the, this hack is kind of working at the moment. And in fact, most of the problems of data being left, over, left in, in data, in, uh, left in, in RAM in practice, actually boil down to uh, programmer's mistakes. So, for example, uh, forgetting to raise the buffer on the, on the stack or on the heap. More interestingly, we found that the uh, IO APIs tend to do uh, caching, and that leads to subtle uh, problems in practice. So let me give you an example. Uh, the GPG program, when it's trying to detect if a file contains private key or a public key, what it does is it tries to read the first line of the file, which typically, if, you have, if you're using the PEM format, will contain you know, an ASCII string saying public key or private key. So if you, as a, as a programmer, what you do is you, you'd open a file handle, and then you might call this fread function to read the first line of the file. Alternatively, you might call this mmap function to map the first line of the file into memory. And once you're done looking at the data, uh, you take care of zeroing the, uh, the buffer. And it turns out that this really simple piece of code actually doesn't erase m memory properly. So the mmap function actually works at the, page, at the page level. So even though you've asked only the first line to be mapped into the file, you actually get the entire page, an entire page's worth of potentially sensitive data into your process. And the fread function is also doing some caching in the hope that if you call the fread function again, the data is already available and the, you don't have to do a syscall. Uh, other thing that we've found is that we've identified a set of functions that, that are really prone to leaving residual data on the stack. So typically formatting functions, such as the printf and the scanf families, fall into this category. Uh, but more generally, functions that are recursive tend to aggressively spill registers on the stack. Um, so beyond these functions, most of the data you'll find on the stack actually uh, is caused because of the ABI calling conventions and register spills. So here's a challenge because as a programmer, you don't have control over these. However, the compiler uh, knows about the stack layout. So here's a sweet spot where we could actually get a compiler support to help the developer erase the stack. And I'm going to elaborate on this idea in the rest of the talk. So as I suggested, the idea is simple. Uh, we'd like to get compiler support, and effectively, effectively we'd like to get the compiler to automatically raise the stack uh, for us on functions that the programmer annotates as being sensitive. And we think that having this annotation-based mechanism is a simple way that programmers can add this feature in their code, uh, which is already available today. So what we did is we uh, implemented a, a compiler plugin in the Clang LLVM framework, which is a widely used uh, compiler framework. But before I move on to describing you know, what we've actually implemented, I'd like to give you a feel for uh, the number of problems that arise in practice when you try to implement a solution like this. So first of all, there's a large amount of code which is provided by the, by the platform where the code runs. And this code is not, we, we can't instrument it at the time that we compile our user, our user space program, okay? So typically, uh, the libc and the loader linker fall into this category. But you also have code provided by the kernel, a small piece of code called the VDSO, which is mapped into user space program uh, as the program starts. Signal handlers can also be problematic. So what happens here is that before the kernel jumps into your signal handler, it pushes on user space stack the uh, current CPU state of your program. So if you're in the middle of a decryption routine, what, what is being pushed on, your, on the user space stack is probably going to contain a lot of sensitive data. Uh, we also need to be uh, careful about registers. Uh, for example, the RBP register used to, uh, originally was used to uh, store a frame pointer, so the, uh, basically an address. And in the new, uh, on 64-bit on machine, it can also be used to store uh, data. So it might contain sensitive data. And we have to be careful about this. Uh, about the compiler, so I've already talked about this a little bit. Uh, most of the problems occur because of compiler optimizations. Because of time constraint, I'm not going to give you more detail about this. I've put up the slide anyway, so if you're interested in this, you can, you, you can look it up later. And of course, the, the programmer, the developer, might also get in the way of proper deletion. So um, variable size object uh, stored in the stack is something that we can't really support because it doesn't allow the compiler to determine the, the size of the object at compilation time. 
And there's also some, uh, some function that can be problematic to support. For example, this sig alt stack function uh, allows the programmer to change the location of the stack uh, for signal handlers. So we've tried to take care of all the problems that can arise in practice uh, in order, of course, to implement our solution. So the first solution we implemented is a, a naive solution which works at the function level. So here the idea is very simple. We instrument every function in the program, even if they are not marked as sensitive by the programmer, and we erase the stack and the register used uh, at the time that the function returns. So this turns out to uh, work uh, to perform really poorly in practice. Uh, on the left side here, this is uh, the case when you want to support uh, signals. And, and as you see, it's about almost four times as slow as the original program. And if you don't care about signals at all, uh, you're still about twice as slow as the original program, which is fairly poor. So we looked at another, another approach. And here the idea is, again, we instrument every function in the program, but this time in order to keep track of how much uh, stack memory is being used at runtime. And we keep track, we keep this maximum memory usage in a global variable. Then in functions annotated by the programmer, we erase uh, the stack using the, the value that we have in the global variable, and we also erase all the registers, all the platform registers at once in this, uh, in this annotated function. And this turns out to actually give you a significant boost. So it's about, you only get 1% performance overhead uh, in practice, with, with some outliers, but uh, I'll, I'll ignore this for now. So uh, can, act can we actually do better? And it turns out that we sort of can, with some caveats. Uh, that's the third solution. So here the idea is we leverage the core graph, which uh, we know at compilation time, in order to compute the maximum stack usage that might ever be used by this function. And once we know the maximum stack usage, we can just uh, erase it in the function annotated as being uh, sensitive. And for the uh, registers, we erase all the registers that are written to in the entire core graph uh, to be conservative. So arguably this, this approach is the best in terms of performance because we are not instrumenting any function besides uh, the sensitive function. But it comes with two major drawbacks. Uh, the first is that it kind of kills the concept of a shared library because you need to know at compilation time you know, which function, what version of the function, and actually the code of the function that is being called. So this is better suited for a statically linked program or uh, embedded systems. And second, uh, there's a bunch of features that we cannot support. So typically, uh, recursive functions, and more generally, functions that create cycles in the call graph. Um, and even more generally, every, every feature which leads to a non-deterministic uh, call graph uh, is, hard to, is hard to support because we can't determine at compilation time what the call graph is going to look like. So to conclude, um, so I've presented a new tool which we hope um, people will use and help, uh, help you guys uh, check your code. I've presented a, uh, the, the implementation of a Clang LLVM uh, plugin to automatically erase the stack and the registers of sensitive functions. So what I'd like to point out here is that this plugin is kind of a hack, unfortunately, in the sense that it's really fragile because of the complexity of platforms and because of the number of uh, components that we need to, uh, to consider for the solution to work reliably. So that kind of raises uh, the question of what is the best way forward? Do we actually need specific uh, ABI for cryptography? Uh, do we need, what kind of support do we need from the kernel, from the compiler, from the programming languages? And these are the, th the sort of questions that we ought to think about if, if we want to solve this problem. Thank you. So uh, we have time for Dimitri and then uh, one more over here. Hi. So I'll try to answer the very last question. You might have mentioned that um, in the C11 language, there is already a built-in support for the version of MEMSET that yeah. is guaranteed not to be optimized. And yeah. the only problem is that it's implemented in one of, possibly in only one compiler. Today, this the Mac version of CLENC, I think. So what we could do is to just press on the compiler developers to finally implement Annex K functions from the C11, and then we'll have the secure mem set, which is not optimized away. Yeah, so uh, I agree, but mem sets is not the only problem. 
So it doesn't solve the stack problem. It doesn't, stack, it doesn't solve the problem of uh, programmers forgetting to erase the, the, uh, the, the buffer or the memory. So that's only one side, one part of the problem, really. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I worry that having support from the compiler and the kernel for this is not enough. Um, that there are probably a lot of ca a lot of caches that are not documented and we don't know about um, in the in the in the in the path from this from the CPU to the memory through the, through the through the chipset and so forth. Um, are you aware of any concrete concerns in that area? So as I said earlier, this is a challenging uh, research topic, and I've I've really just taken the first step. Uh, to lay down some kind of foundations, and I'm only looking at user space program. And what you're mentioning is something that I kind of uh, alluded to in the, I think, the second slide, where I said there's an enormous amount of code to uh, to be considered. And basically, what you're saying kind of falls into this category. So, so you need a lot more research to figure out, you know, what's happening in the kernel, what's happening maybe on the bus. There's also some caching being done uh, in the RAM itself. So there's a huge amount of code you you need to consider. Yeah. So I don't have uh, I don't have an answer for this. Okay, let's uh, thank the Lord again.